Hello, welcome to Homework Help, the Algonquin Area Public Library Valentine Run Homework Help video series for all ages. I'm Valentine Autumn, and I'm going to show you how to talk about and write the correct essay format and how to write letters to teachers. So we're going to start off today with just the standard five paragraph essay outline format. So essays are important because you're going to be writing a ton of them in high school and you're also going to have to write one for college. So this is something super important that's going to prep you for that regardless if you've ever written an essay before or not. So this has five paragraphs and we're going to start off today with the introduction. This is always your first paragraph. So you want to have a creative opening to catch the audience's attention. So you can use like quotes, interesting facts, figures, jokes, or anecdotes, etc. So an anecdote would be like a story. So something that maybe you've had a personal experience of or someone else you know's personal experience. Now, you want to have your intro be something that's going to grasp the audience's attention. So if I'm writing a topic about maybe global warming, I'm not going to start off with, this is a fact about global warming. That's just not interesting, at least, you know, for most people reading it, unless they're maybe a specialist in this area, it's not really interesting to them. Start off with, as temperatures rise and as the icebergs melt, that's going to get people's attention. It's going to really gravitate people towards your story and they're going to want to read it. But also make sure that if you're starting off and you just quote a fact, you quote your source too, because you don't want to seem uncredible. You can also start off with background information on your topic. So again, if I'm writing about weather, for example, I could give some information that I know or information that I've heard of on this topic so people understand more about what I'm talking about. Then you're going to go into just a preview of the main points of the essay. So think of the preview as kind of like a movie preview. When you see it, you only see the important parts of the essay. You're only seeing like a little of the important parts of this movie. So you want this to be like just taking out what you're going to talk about, a kind of little clippets and little snippets of what you're going to talk about. That's a really good way to start an essay. And, but this is not getting straight to the point like this is what I believe because that comes in here at the thesis statement, which is going to be so important in all your writing. Thesis statements are something that teachers are going to grade on and that it's going to be so important that you really can rock a thesis statement because it could really change your grade. So this statement is basically what you believe in, what you're writing about, and what your topic is about. So if I was talking about, for example, social media and my opinion on it, I would say my thesis is, I believe that social media is not healthy for society today because it affects mental health. And then I would go, and that would be my thesis. That is what I believe. That is what I'm here to talk to you about today. Then we go into the body paragraph. So your first paragraph is just your topic sentence, which states the main idea of the paragraph, and it's just going to transition from the paragraph before it. So between these two paragraphs, you don't want a rocky transition. You want a transition that flows because when people read your piece, transitions are so key because it can really confuse people and it can confuse your main idea or what you're trying to get across. And you want to get your point across successfully and you're not going to if you don't have a really good transition. Um, this is probably the most important part coming up here is your supporting details. So you want to strengthen that topic sentence, which is right under your first paragraph, what you usually started off with. You want to use two minimum, just two is your minimum amount you should use, supporting details in each paragraph. And each of these details can include facts, examples, expert opinions, but a specific subject. If a primary or secondary source is used, students must use MLA parenthetical citations. So there's a lot of big words. There's a lot going on there. So let me kind of break it down for you guys. So when you're citing details, notice it says expert opinions. If I'm writing about the topic of, honestly, we'll just go back to weather, about weather, I'm not going to go ask my mom and my dad, can you give me your expert opinion on Because they're not, their chances are they're not an expert in weather. Now, if I were to go and I wanted to get evidence on weather, I would go to someone like a meteorologist and I would, you know, see what their opinion is. Or I would do research on that topic. You want to go to credible sources so your piece is credible and it's reliable and people can believe what you're saying. Don't, you are not an expert on this topic, especially at your age now. You can't say yourself as an expert just because, you know, you've, you know, seen all types of weather. That does not make you an expert. Make sure you know that. Now, this is something that actually confuses a lot of people, a primary and a secondary source. 
So let me kind of just try to get that clear for you guys. So primary source is like a photo of a certain event. It's like, it's like you were there right when it happens or an interview of someone that was standing right there when it happened. A secondary source would be like, uh, if your if your relatives pass down a story generation from generation, it becomes a secondary source because people change it up. People can, you know, differ. There can be different things changing in that. So make sure primary sources are typically your route to go. There are many websites that you can find primary sources on, but I would really stay away from .com. You're going to find so much better information on other websites. .com is just really not the strongest one to go to. So make sure you stick away from that. So then talking about paragraph two. So you're again going to continue with that topic sentence. That topic sentence, as you could probably see in this, is right here, here, and here. You're going to have your topic sentence in all three. So let's just go back to my topic of weather. I'm just picking this because it's, it's a rainy day out today. So it just made sense. So I want to again restate my topic sentence so I know I'm talking about weather again and then include another smooth transition between these two because I don't want to just, you know, jump to the next and rush it. And then I want to make sure I have supporting details to find or strengthen the topic sentence. So again, using more supporting details. So I should have at least used two details here. Maybe I want to use two here, two here. That's great. So paragraph three is the same as two. You're going to do the same thing again. So just make sure from paragraph one to paragraph three, you're doing the same thing. In the end, you should have about six. If you have three paragraphs, as your body, you should probably have about six evidence because that will make it a lot stronger. Now, again, you can have more than three paragraphs. You can have less than three. It doesn't matter as long as you make your piece strong. Um, and see, it says you can have more paragraphs using the same format, just continuing on these. Paragraph one is usually your most strong paragraph and it's the most gripping because it's trying to get people here. Now, Conclusion. Conclusions are so important because it is how this person is ending the piece. And if you end this poorly, they're going to take with them that you ended this badly and they're not going to want to share information or do anything or take action with what you've stated. So in your conclusion, you want to restate that thesis statement, which is up here in your introduction. So again, that would be like your opinion on something. And you should reword the thesis statement. You don't want to say the same exact thing you said here from here because it just seems lazy. Change it up. Restate it a little bit. Then you're going to summarize your main points. So you should reword again your topic sentences. So taking the topic sentences from each because you're going to have three different topics talking about. So if I'm going into weather, maybe I'm talking about, you know, tropical weather, cold weather, you know, all different types of weather in each of these then I'm going to restate those three points down here in the conclusion. I'm not going to say in the same way I introduced them here. And then again, in your conclusion, you want to tie it to your opening. So you should restate your conclusion to the opening of the essay. So if I was like, today I'm going to hear talk to you about weather, you could say here, and that is what you need to know about weather and its importance to global warming today. Okay, it's, it's tying this together. It's kind of like you're tying up loose ends. Like you start here, and it's like it's a circle almost. You start in your introduction, it comes to your body, it comes to your conclusion, it has to come back up to make sure it makes sense with your introduction. So that's very important. Now, this sheet here, you can go and print. I did not, you know, this is not my own work, but this is something that I think that's really useful for you guys. But with me saying and stating here, this is not my own work, that's something so important that you have to understand. That's what the MLA means, is that if you find a fact online that's not your own knowledge, you need to state who this is. And your teacher will show you how to do that in an MLA structure, however they want to use it. But they'll tell you how to give credit to the author because that is plagiarizing. If you plagiarize, you're going to probably get a zero on the assignment. And in college, you can actually get kicked out of the college. So I really would stick away from copying and pasting information without giving credit to that person because that's stealing information and that's just not, not what you want to do. You're going to really have problems doing that. So again, you're all probably have written essays before and just make sure you understand that you're never going to have a perfect essay. There's going to be flaws. There's going to be things that you could always change and better and that's okay. That's what we do as writers. We're all writers. Is something important to understand that you have to improve every day with your writing skills. Every day it's going to change 
and you're going to better yourself by practicing writing, by going over these different ways and these outlines and these formats that you need to follow. And if you follow these formats, you're going to do great. Just make sure you've identified the difference between a thesis and a topic because a thesis is like the overall topic is like the little parts of it. So that's kind of the main point of an essay. Again, super important to understand how to know how to write an essay because you're going to have to do it a ton in school. I mean, I'm a junior now and I've probably written maybe 30 essays. So you're going to need to really know how to do a lot of essays because you're going to write them a lot. So again, I just wanted to then show you kind of what an essay would look like if you were to actually write it. So this is kind of the format of an essay. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing this on my Chromebook, so it's a little, but this is what an essay would look like. At the top here, you'd put your name, the class, the semester, and then more specifics on the class, your professor, in this case, your teacher, and the date. And then this is kind of like on your topic. And then you put your title, and then you always want to make sure you indent paragraphs. So you're going to begin your essay here, and that's your introduction containing your thesis statement and a brief mention of the major parts that's going to fall in your essay. And you want to use double spacing between your lines. Typically, a text format would be Times New Roman and size 12, usually double spaced. If you don't know what that means, you will learn all this, I promise. Your teach the teachers are great at you know any school you go to in this area, and they will teach you about that. Um, each paragraph is indented. Either use the space bar five times or press the tab key once. Your text is left aligned. The commonly accepted font, oh, here, I didn't even read this yet, and it's, it's Times New Roman size 12. And you're just going to use regular paper. Don't worry about the inches I tell you. Just do your paper. And you only want to print text on one side. Do not print on both sides. It just looks sloppy. And it's a lot when a teacher is trying to read, you know, 50 essays and they're flipping it over. It's just easy to flip. So do it on one side. And don't be afraid to go on to the next page. You know, even if it's like a one sentence on the next page, don't put it to the back. Um, the title of your essay is always in the same font and the same size as the rest of your essay. And do not bold, italicize it, underline it. Italicize just means to make it went straight up and down to slant the words. Um, again, this is just where you should place it. Don't worry about that. That's just basically press tab like twice and it will space it for you. In the upper right hand corner of your page, include the first page, type your surname and the page number as seen above. So for example, and you can actually, there's a setting that will do this for you, but this is this person's um, last name and then number one. So this is page one. So his name is David Livingstone. So he puts Livingstone one, so page one. And then on page two, he put Livingstone two. But there is a setting that you can actually set up on your computer to do that for you so you're not going through every page and doing that because that can be really, really tiring. But again, since this is not my sheet, I'm just going to say this is one I found online and this is not one that I created. So I'm not taking credit for this sheet as well. Now, what we're going to end with today, which is really important too, is a letter and an email because when you email your teachers for maybe help or something personal, you're going to want to sound professional and, you know, not sound like you're texting them. Texting has really harmed our social skills with, when it comes to emailing. So I'm hoping that this is going to help out a little bit, but this is just my last sheet I have for you guys today. Again, I did not write this sheet. So when you're writing a letter or an email, it doesn't matter. So personal letters, they could be short or long. They're usually chatty and informal, whether you're writing to family or friends. So when you talk to your family and your friends, it's different than you talk to a teacher or to a principal or to a counselor or a coach. You don't talk to them really as much as your friend, maybe a coach, but it's typically with more respect. And it's you want to, you know, be more, you know, concise and not kind of chat with them as much as more I'm getting to be, I'm a, I have a formal request or a formal question to ask you. So formal letters are written to people we don't know on a personal level or different reasons to find out information, to apply for a job or a course, or to make a complaint. So for example, if I'm asking my teacher for help, I don't know my teacher on a personal level. So I'm not going to be chatty and, you know, unless maybe you build a relationship with this teacher, but 
if you're not on a personal level with them, you should be talking to them with respect. Even if you are on a personal level, you should still. Um, examples for applying for jobs. So again, I'm a junior. I've applied for two jobs. I, I have two jobs. So it's important to understand that you're going to be applying for jobs in your near future. And, or if you already have or you're planning on it, it's so important to write professional emails because they're not going to respect you if you don't have respect towards them in an email. And to make a complaint, but if you're making a complaint, you're probably not being very professional. So hopefully none of you guys are making complaints in high school. There isn't really much to complain about. So don't really worry about that part. So the first step you want to do is decide how formal your letter needs to be. That's, again, going back and seeing who am I writing to? Am I writing to, you know, someone above me? Am I writing to, you know, a superintendent? Am I writing to a friend, a family member, a teacher, a coworker? You want to see how formal that needs to be. Like, if I was to write to a coworker at work, I'd probably be more chatty and more, like, you know, goofy, more fun because they're my friends. They're not someone, they're not above me. Now, if I was writing to my supervisor, even though I am friends with them, I still would be more professional sounding because they're above me. They have that control. Um, and step two is important because step two is literally all of this. So this is a whole one step. So just be aware with this part. So you want to start with your opening formula. So basically that's just going to be like, you know, dear, blah, 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 blah. And you want to put like, you know, dear to your teacher. And if their name is like Mrs. Foster, you're not going to say, and their first name's Lisa. You don't say dear Lisa. You say dear Mrs. Foster. They're not your BFF. You don't need to say their first name. Uh, you should always um, talk about them. And actually with essays too, you always refer to the person you're talking about by their last name because you're not like buddy, buddy with them. But you'll learn that. Um, and then you're going to go to um, part two of step two, which is your introductory paragraph, which would be your initial greeting and your introduction of the reason to write. So if you're struggling in a class, you're going to say, hey, Mrs. Smith, I'm having problems with this lesson in geometry. I was wondering if you could help me or if we could stay after class today to do so. So you're not going to want to be like you don't want to get too into depth in this initial like greeting you kind of just want to state the issue you're having and then in three which is your body paragraph this is your main information it's divided into one or more paragraphs depending on the length of the letter email so when i email teachers typically my emails are about two sentences They're usually just like oh i was just a little confused on this part of class i'm not writing a huge letter so that's something to understand too is you might not have a ton of paragraphs that's okay Regardless if it's one paragraph or one sentence, it really doesn't matter. But this is just all the information and everything that you need help on. So just understand that that part is important too. This is the main reason of what you, you know, want. This is like, I need help with this. I just wasn't, maybe I wasn't in class today and I'm just a little confused. Part four is your final remarks. You say what you expect from the letter's recipient, whether you want them to write back or to see you soon. So... Um, let's say, again, I'm having trouble in this geometry class, and I would say to them, uh, you know, I was just hoping you could stay with me after class. This is what, this is your goal. So part four is your goal, what you want to happen. So this is important to understand because this is where you say, hey, I want this to happen. You know, can we do this? But be very polite. Don't say, meet me after class. You're not the teacher. Say, please, would you take time out of your day to see me after class? If they say no, then they say no, but make sure it's very respectful because you don't want to, if you want to get what you need, you're not going to want to be rude and controlling because especially since they're the adult and they're the teacher. Then you're going to do your closing formula, which would be like from blank or sincerely blank. And then part six would be your name and your signature. You can actually create a signature on Google and it looks very professional. So I would highly recommend you guys start making a signature or do that. It's, it's very it's very good. Like it looks very professional. And then the final step is just use um, useful expressions. So again, don't be demanding. Be very polite. Don't say this is what I want. Kind of request it. Be like, hey, you know, is there any way this can happen? Don't be like, this is what I want. Because it's just not going to get where you get you where you need to be. So again, it's really important that you guys understand how important is that because we're not talking face to face in a letter or an email 
or an essay, you have to be very, very clear with what your tone is. Don't sound rude. Um, something important is to follow that 24 hour rule. So maybe you got an F on a test and you just are fuming. You're like, I don't ha know this, how this happened. You know, I studied so well, it's gotta be on the teacher's end. And usually it's not, but don't send them an email fuming spend 24 hours from when you got the test and then send an email. Some teachers actually require that, but a lot of students still go ahead and do it. But don't just say what you have to say right after that test because you're fuming, you're emotional. Don't have your letters be emotional. So make sure you use that 24-hour rule and don't send anything rude anytime, any, but at least you'll be a little calmer after 24 hours. So if you guys have any other questions, or anything like this, there's this is there's great websites to look up where you can get help writing letters, emails, or essays. And there's a lot of practice places where you can practice writing essays. Um, so I hope that this helped you guys out because I know writing essays, letters, and emails can be a challenge, and we really have to work, like I said, to better ourselves every day with our writing, and we really have to practice it. So thank you for joining us on Homework Help today. If you have any video suggestions or you are a teen who would like to earn volunteer hours by recording a video for us, please email lindsay at teen at aapld.org. You can do what I do for Make It.